everyone, it's Andrea and today I'm here with my Marilyn Monroe Scrapbook Tour Volume 5. So, so far we've looked at 1, 2, 3 and 4, oh my god there are over 30 of them, but this is Volume 5, so we will continue the journey through my Marilyn Scrapbook collection. So again, this is a WH Smith photo album, as you can see. This, one, this time, I, instead of one picture of Marilyn, I've actually got a montage or a collage of pictures that I've taken, that I've put pictures from magazines and calendars and such, newspapers, just stick them on. Nice little opening. So, we'll just go through these one at a time. There's, sorry about the light, I will try and angle it up slightly. Let me just put this uh, colored pencil box there. That's not really enough. Let's try this one as well, is that better? Yeah, that's a bit better. No, you can't see it. So this one is um, Hollywood Legends. Uh, this was um, because of a new book that came out called Star Style by Patty Fox. And this is about various stars and their impact on the fashion world. So this was a little bit about Marilyn. I think this was in The Inquirer or something like that. So for once, nothing sensationalist, which is nice. And has some lovely photographs. Now on the next page we have um, an article from Hello Magazine about Marilyn Monroe's sister. This is Bernice Miracle and there's a picture of Marilyn by Bert Stern. Oops, I just hit the camera. I can't go out any further, so <laughs> I need to put it up a little bit. Just a sec while well, I just, woo, there we go, that's better. Now we can see it and you can see all the rubbish on my table as well. So this was um, <clears throat> one of her birthdays, I think, would have been June. Maybe her 70th birthday or something like that, and they do all these articles. Um, so this is a nice spread about Bernice Miracle and her book. Um, and as you can see, this is her sister Bernice. This is Marilyn in 1954, and can you not see the resemblance? You can in the lips and the nose and the eyes. You can really see the family resemblance. Um, yeah, it was her 70th birthday. So here we are, and this is what people think they would have that she would have looked like um, at 70. <clears throat> so, this is an old, old article. <laughs> uh, then we have um, something about Saint or Sinner, again, about her 70th birthday. Um, pick of the day, so you can buy the present. And just a few pictures to fill in the gaps. We have OK Weekly. This was June 2nd, 1996. Again, her 70th birthday. So, the injury myth of the movie star who would have been 70 this week. And there's a massive article in this about man, it's several pages long. It was actually a very nice article, not overly sensationalist, I'm sure there was some in there. Um, also shows people who dressed up as Marilyn or did um, played Marilyn, Catherine Hicks. I think that's Constant Forland, is it? Missy Rowe, sorry. Um, there's Jane Mansfield, there's Teresa Russell and so on. People who played Marilyn. Um, again, more pictures of the, the woman herself. Her grave. Um, and what it's like now. And then at the end there is uh, on this bit it's about uh, Monroe memorabilia and the things you can buy. Um, what is very interesting is there's a, I think it's a psychologist or psychiatrist or somebody named Dr. Wilson. It says, Dr. Wilson sees a natural end to the Marilyn myth. She came from the 50s, the golden age, after the war when the teenager was born. He says, she died at a time when the best and the brightest appeared to be dying young in Vietnam and Dallas. But those who were teenagers then are growing older. I wasn't even born then. I think it's very much a latter half of the 20th century thing. I'm sure it will fade. It's already starting to. Who is he? Who is this person who knows nothing? Um, and then carries on. And Marilyn, after all, would have served her biblical three school years and ten by now, enough for anybody. My generation, born as she was dying, grew up on two particular images of Marilyn. Andy Warhol's multicoloured poster and Elton John's pop song, and it seems to me you live like a can in the wind. So he's talking about people of his generation, but explain my generation. Explain my friend George's generation. George is 15. He's a huge Marilyn and old cinema fan. So this only explains... The people who lived then. It doesn't explain why people who have been born since that, so I was born in the 70s, people who were born in the 80s, the 90s and the noughties, why are they all fans of Marilyn? It is not fading. You may not see the cheap rubbish that used to come out so much, although there is still cheap rubbish available, 
and there are more expensive and more quality products. But Marilyn's legacy and legend is not fading. And I thought at the time, he's talking out of his ass. excuse me. And you know what? I still think he was talking out of his ass because she's bigger than ever. She's more massive than ever. Her clothes still outsell most other people of her time and today's generation. Her personal effects. You can't put that down to being a generational thing. It is just, there's just some magic there. Anyway, enough of that and on to the next. Marion and the Lost Years. So this is what happened if Marion had survived 1962. Um, would she have married, re remarried Joseph Maggio? Would she have done adopted children? Would she have given up film? Would she have done something else? And it, it's just a little fictional story about what might have happened. And again, this one is another take on it. In this one, she was happy and got on with her life and lived. And in this version, which I believe is from the Daily Mail, so surprise, surprise, or one of those papers, it was about how she wished she had died in 1962 because she would have lived forever, but you wouldn't necessarily know that because some people didn't. There you go. Then on the next page, we have an article called I Know How Marilyn Was Murdered. Ha, 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 ha. And again, it's about say goodbye to the present. We also have a picture of uh, Mira Savina, um, who played her in that horrific film, Norma Jean and Marilyn. And again, here she is, Mira Savina. This is all about that. And that was from Sending Mira. And again, we're still in June 1990s because it was her 70th birthday. There was quite a lot about her. You wait till we get to 1999. Another article, now the clues put, put point to murder again. <laughs> Um, I, I roll material over these pages, Monroe's final drama. Me and Marilyn Monroe, this is about Susan Strasberg and Marilyn. Again, we had a few articles about her previously when her book came out. This again is about her relationship with Marilyn and um, what it was like. And I guess because it was the 70th birthday, so they were all coming out of the, the woodwork. And then on this one, we have lots of different articles. This one's Hooray for Henry. This is about a person um, who had a 30th birthday party in 1996 and he had a Marilyn lookalike jump out of a cake, as you do. Um, then we've got a lawyer bids to prove Monroe Marilyn murder plot. There was this big thing about the time about because you were nobody. Um, luckily that never happened, but there we go. We have some lovely pictures of Marilyn up here. We have a question that was in the Daily Mail. Did James Dean ever meet Marilyn? And they answer the question. On the next page, it's Jane Horrocks in Little Rock again. Uh, Little Rock, Little Voice again, playing uh, Little Voice. On this page, we have The Kennedys Murdered Marilyn, which is um, an excerpt from the book uh, Crowning Glory by Sidney Gilioff, who was one of her hairdressers. Um, obviously, it's not just about Marilyn, it's just that's the biggest bit. There's obviously a bit about Ivor Gardner and a bit about Judy Garland. Loves Judy Garland as well. Oh yes. Um, this is again from the National Enquirer. So sensationalist nonsense as usual. They always do. Here we just have a few pictures of Marilyn and a couple of Marilyn lookalikes. And this one is Pauline, is it? I believe that's Pauline Bailey over there. Uh, on the next page, this is um, an, a small part of an article about Arthur Miller and Marilyn. I think it was a huge article about Arthur Miller, but um, I only kept the section that was about Marilyn because that's the bit I'm interested in. On the next page is a feature on the book The Men Who Mur Murdered Marilyn by Matthew Smith, titled Snuffing Out a Star. And again, it's obviously about the men who murdered Marilyn. Really? <sighs> Um, on the next one, there's a little tiny article about a rave from the grave. Um, and it's just about Marilyn Monroe's Playboy's first nude will grace January's cover 34 years after her death. So that's all right. We don't mind a bit of that. Bit of Playboy, bit of Marilyn. This is when I really started um, dating all the Marilyn articles and putting sites in the source of where I got them from. Every now and again, if I get a duplicate and it's got the date and source on it, I will go back, find that article in one of the books and write it in. So that's what's happened on some of the previous ones where you've seen the dates. So this was from the Sunday Times magazine, Prince and the Showgirl. This is about Jock Carroll, 
who was a uh, young photographer when he landed this assignment to photograph Marion on the set of the film Niagara. He died in 1995 and unearthed the pictures that he took of her and this was about the release of the book, um, the Jock Carroll book and I can't remember, is it Falling for Marilyn, I think it's called? The Lost Niagara Photos? Something like that. It's a lovely book, mind. I might actually spotlight that soon because it's been out for a while. Um, so it just tells his story and how he met her and what he felt and what she was like and uh, showcases some of the photographs he took of her during that period. Yeah, Falling for Marilyn. And that was published in November of 1996. That was a long, 21 years ago. I was so excited to get that book and that article when that book came out. Oh, it was fantastic. Okay, on the next page we have a short article from Take a Break magazine, which is I Am The Girl, I'm The Girl Who Might, which is best about, about um, how to dress like Marilyn, really. So um, we've got a girl dressed up as Marilyn here. I don't think it says who she is. No, it doesn't, but um, apparently the dress belongs to the model and it's quite a good copy as well, so I don't know who she is. But anyway, she looks pretty good, tells you how to do the makeup and how to do the hair. Then we have the start of the Playboy article, the 1997, which we mentioned before. So if you're not keen on seeing nipples and nudes, please, please turn off now because I'm not going to spend my time uh, playing Twister and covering them up. So here we are. This is the cover. This is a Milton Green shot. Absolutely stunning. I love the Milton Green pictures. Then over here we have uh, this again is Milton Green black sitting, followed by the original nudes that John Tom Kelly took. And I'm just going to flip quickly through these. Um, again, that's the cover shot. These are pictures taken by a artist named Earl Moran, who or Earl Moran, depending on how you pronounce the name and he uh, took photographs and then he would draw them from, from, from the photographs. He'd draw her and he'd change her hair colour and her lipstick and stuff and he would use them as calendars. Again, we have more, another one here from the Tom Kelly session and this one is the uh, swimming scene from her final and completed film, Something's Got to Give. The next two pages are all Bert Stern pictures. These, uh, some people don't like these pictures. I like some of them. And I, I, there are some I really like and some I really don't like. And the nudes don't bother me, I quite like them. I just don't, there's some of the ones of her in the dresses I don't like. That's just me. Another one from the Burt Stearns shoot, although it's this one his assistant took. So that's that, that's the nudes out of the way. We're back to Scandal, Sunday Times, 2nd of February 1997. Hoover of the FBI had stars in his eyes. And the tells story has how he used to follow various stars, including Marilyn, Jane Ransfield, obviously the president, Kim Novak is there, and, and so on. Um, mostly it's a lot of night nonsense. And it, so this is a, that bit is actually an excerpt from JFK's X-Files, about people he allegedly slept with. And this one is about <sighs> J. Edgar Hoover following various people around. Why. The next article is from the National Enquirer, surprise, surprise, what the stars wear under their clothes. And it's got Cindy Crawford, Claudia Schaefer, Whitney Houston, Sophia Loren, and of course a little tiny picture of Marilyn there. Um, just saying that Marilyn likes to wear Chanel number no. 5, or did. Another little piece from the National Enquirer, and then just a couple of pictures to fill up the gap. This is going to be the shortest one ever, I think, because I'm near the end. On um, this one we have... The Daily Mail, 22nd of February, Malibu Monroe, a girl who stepped out of Play uh, Baywatch. And this is about, um, how do you know what, Gina Lee Nolan, who dressed up as Marilyn um, for a film called Underground Comedy Movie. No idea why. Never seen the film, not even interested. So, but okay, keeps Marilyn in the, in the, the limelight. And then a nice picture of her with Tom Yule from The Seven Year Itch. On the next page again, National Enquirer, March the 4th, 97 minutes again, it's Gina Lee Nolan in that uh, underground comedy film, but there's a colour picture. And then on the other side we have some pictures of Marilyn, followed by a copy of the original Playboy cover and some other magazine covers. 
I actually have that one there and I have that one there. Yes, I have those two, but there you go. Uh, the next page is an um, advert for one of the Franklin Mint dolls when they were still available in the UK. Obviously we can't get them over here now, sadly. We have to import them from America at exorbitant costs because of postage um, and take the risk of them getting damaged. Uh, I have ordered from America then in the past. And this one was uh, her in the Gold Lame. I don't own that one, sadly. Never mind. The next page we have an article called Jeans for Sale. Um, and again, it's just a basic article about DNA and how it can be mass re reproduced and captured in plastic. So you could get a pair of earrings with Marilyn's DNA in it. So I, why you would want that, I'm not actually sure, but uh, apparently it was the next big thing back in the 90s. It really, truly was a strange decade. And then on the next page, we have a obituary of the uh, costume designer Jean-Louis, who designed the costumes here, as you can see, for something has got to give. And also the President Kennedy happy birthday dress. So, as well as others, as you can see, there's Rita Hayworth. Um, brilliant designer. So, like I said, when somebody in Marilyn's circle dies, if I find an obituary for them, I do tend to put that in the scrapbook. I like to have those. Um, on the next page, we've got um, It's Friday Books. And uh, this is about the Earl Leaf book of Marrow from beginning to end. Um, Bella Magazine Soap Sillies is just Ken Barlow with a Marilyn lookalike. <laughs> I just don't know why. And again, an obituary of Sidney Gilleroff, the hairdresser, um, who died in 97 on May 28th. And there's a carries on over there. And the next article is Good with a Wig and Wiggle, Goodbye Sexy Spice, Hello Norma Jean. And this is just about um, uh, Jerry Hallowell from the Spice Girls, uh, dressed up as Marilyn in the Spice Girls film Spice World the movie briefly and the very final page is just some random shots of Marilyn um, we've got one of her in River No Return one from There's No Business Like Show Business and just one of her at, at on the telephone so that is a book four but sorry volume five of the Marilyn Rose scrapbook tour I've got so many of them I'm getting confused um, I hope you've enjoyed this um, and I hope you enjoy this continuing series like I said I've got quite a lot of them uh, to go. I'm still actually filling a book. I've got a scrapbook on the go at the moment. Uh, this, I'm still 10 years behind so I've got a lot of work to do to catch up and we've got a lot of work till we get to the end. So I'm going to go now and find book six and I will see you soon. Bye!